Welcome to this video where we will learn how to use Oracle Jet components and in this case how to use OJ inputs being the first ones the OJ input text and the OJ input number. We will leave the app layout and the navigation as is for now and let's focus in how to use the Jet component. In this video we will use the customers page to display the components we want to add. If you google for OJet cookbook you can see some examples of how to use the Oracle Jet component. We can look for the inputs component under the form section so let's scroll and there they are and let's start by using the OJ input text component. You can note all the OJ components HTML tags start with the OJ prefix. In this case, it is OJ dash input dash text. In the other examples, will be OJ dash something else. You can see in the sidebar several examples where you can see the code, being the HTML and JavaScript or even TypeScript if you created an app to use TypeScript. I created an app without specifying I want to use TypeScript, thus all my lessons will use JavaScript. In the OJ Get Started guide you can see how to create an app to use TypeScript instead of JavaScript if you want. Let's start with the binding example where we will bind a variable to the value attribute of the OJ input text tag. Of course we will also learn how to load the JET component and how to use the page view model to populate the HTML attributes with real values by using the variable in the HTML. We can see the code examples in this section below the rendering result. We can see the HTML or the JavaScript code if you click to choose the JavaScript instead of TypeScript and then you have the uh, demo.js file. You can see the code inside here that results in this input up there. Inside the demo.html tab we can see the OJ input text definition. In this case it is a really simple one where we are giving an ID, a static one for now. Later we will change to assign dynamic IDs, avoiding duplicated IDs inside the app. And then we have the value attribute where we are giving a read and write variable named value. If you recall from the last video, a read and write variable is declared using the curly brackets where we are stating we can change the variable and the object component also can change its value when the user performs a certain action. In this case is by changing the value when the user is typing some letters in the input. If we use instead the square brackets the object component will only read the variable and will not update it as the user changes the input value. I will demonstrate it to you in a minute. For now let's open the Visual Studio Code and I strongly recommend using the Visual Studio Code to develop your JET application code. And now I'm showing you the extensions I use in the Visual Studio Code so I can code better and faster. In the extensions tab I have Firstly, the bracket per colorized to to change the brackets color so I can see when they start and when they finish. You can see different colors for every type of brackets. I have also the code spell checker that helped me to verify if all my variables are in camel case or pascal case, if all my variables are correct. Then I have the Oracle Jet core extension that give you some hints while declaring the JET based variables and components. I also have the JavaScript ES6 code snippet so I can have code suggestions. And finally the indent rainbow that especially in HTML helps me to see the indentation of the HTML tags. 
My JavaScript formatter is the Studio Code Default 1 and in the HTML formatter I have two settings I always change. If you go to the Studio Code settings and look for HTML, if you scroll down a little bit, I always change these wrap attributes to align multiple and the wrap line length to 60. Now you know all my settings, we will change the customer view model to have an input text inside of it. So I will open the customer's view and the customer view model. Let's split the view in the right side. For now, the view model just have the view model declaration with some boilerplate code. I'm going to delete this as we are not using that right now. I'm having only an empty view model. And if, we, if you look to the customer HTML file, we have the div with the code we are displaying inside the tab. So this code. This is where we will change. As it is a code fragment, we will not declare an, an HTML tag. This is injected inside the body tag, the, the one here in the index HTML code by loading the OJ module. Let's go to the OJ cookbook and copy and paste this. And for now, let's put here an empty value. Let's close the tag. This is our OJ input text tag with an ID and an empty value. As soon as you save the files, the Oracle Jet will reload the, all the code. Be aware that if you have some JSON files and you change the JSON files, the Oracle Jet CLI will not reload automatically, only in the JS and HTML files. If you go to your app, you cannot see the input text. And why? The reason is that the browser does not know what is OJ input text. It is a completely different HTML tag. Thus, we need to tell the browser how to handle this tag by loading the OJ input text module. If you go to the demo.js file here, you can see an example where we have the OJ input text module being loaded. So we just need to add it here. And if you save and go to your page, we have now the input there where you can put some text inside of it. Now, how to know the, the data the user is putting inside the OJ input text? We need to add a variable here. And if you recall it, it is by using a read and write variable. So we can change the value inside our view models code. And also if the user changes the input text, we will also have that update. Let's call it input value. And every, every variable we are using in HTML, we need to specify it as a property of our view model by using the this keyword and this is equals to something let's try hello world if you go to your page we will see this value being initialized as hello world if you want to update this value and always have this value updated we need to use the knockout js observable to update the value by not refreshing the html element itself. How to use an account observable? You can also look to the cookbook code. You can see here the knockout being loaded. And here it's imp an important thing to know because as we want to store the value inside the um, inside the variable so we can use, we need to have some order. So we don't want to load the OJ input text module into a variable, but we want to load the knockout as keyo. This keyo will always be aligned to the first loaded module because it's the first one here. If you have some A variable before, the knockout will be loaded in 
a variable and not Kyo. The Kyo will have the OJ input text. Okay, let me just replace the double quotes with single quotes. I prefer it. And let's give an enter so we can look better to the um, loading modules. Now we have the knockout library being loaded and we need to specify an observable value. Let's use the keo.observable and inside the observable value we specify the value we want. Let's use hello world for now as an example and if you go to the page we still have the hello world sentence inside of it. However, right now if we change it as it is a read and write variable the value here inside your view model will be updated how can we see that happening let's use a tag that is the oj bind text that can bind a text to a span to that can bind text to your dom you have also that example so you have the um, oj bind text tag we can copy that this tag binds a text to your DOM. You can put it inside some, let's say, if you can declare a span or, or even a div inside the span and then the OJBind text. And we want to see the result of this value being updated. Here we are using the read only uh, type of variable with the square brackets because we don't want to change or we don't want that or the Oracle Jet component changes the, the actual value here. This is another component. We want only to display the value that is inside this variable and inside the OJ input text component, we want that the Oracle Jet component updates the value when the user changes its value. If we save this and go to your app in the browser, you can see hello world and hello world appears here as a, a span with this text if you inspect it uh, let me change this to the right and let's try to inspect you can see it's a span and inside this hello world if we change this and click outside or press enter the value is changed this read and write variable as it is inside a component that updates the value will be updated and then we can see that by looking to the variable you can see that here or even when we press a button you can have the value inside the variable inside our view model we will see that later if i change it here to be um only uh, a read only uh, variable you will see that if I change here the value, as I click outside, the value is still the same. So the Oracle Jet component will not update the variable here, this input value property from your customer view model. And this is an important concept, okay? Let's undo these changes. So this is the first code we need to know to use the input.